Hello everybody, welcome to the video. My name is Maze, and today we are going to make this simple but sturdy plywood box. This construction technique will use mainly dowels. It's a very simple and sturdy way to make boxes and cabinets. And with that out of the way, let's get to making some dust. So to start off, I just rough cut up my plywood stock. I'm cutting a rough height here, what's going to be the height of the box. And then I cut a rough width of each box. Out of this piece, I'll get my two sides, my front, my back, and my bottom. You could do all of this with a circular saw and a straight edge or a track saw. Then from the leftover piece, I'll cut out the top. And then I go over to the table saw and I'll cut everything to the same height first. And then I'll use that same dimension to cut both sides so that they're a perfect square. And then I'll, I'll cut the front and back a little bit longer. Um, the table saw is really the best tool to use for this. Uh, if you use a circular saw, you'll have to find a, make a jig or find a way to make sure both of your sides are the same dimension and both the, your front and back are the same dimension and that everything's the same height. Otherwise, your box won't be square. And here's the the trick to this uh, technique is I'm going to glue and screw everything up at first. This gives me a chance to focus in on each corner and glue each corner together one at a time to make sure everything's flush and lines up without having to mess with a bunch of clamps. These, I'm going to replace these screws and these screws are essentially acting as clamps. And if you've ever tried to glue a box together it's real hard to kind of balance everything in and get it all locked in. This allows me to just focus on one corner at a time and glue everything up, let the glue set with the screws in it, and then just replace the screws with dowels. So you can see me doing that here. I'm just taking out the screws and then drilling a bigger hole where the screw was and putting a dowel in. You can also see how one of my edges has the dowels and then the other edge has the exposed plywood. And so I'm going to be painting this, so none of that matters. But if I weren't painting it, I'd wanna to try to keep it so that one side had all dowels on both edges and then the other parts had the plywood edge, so the front and back would have the dowels and the sides would have the plywood edges or vice versa, depending on your preference. So you heard the old adage of measure twice and cut once. I find when I'm doing fine woodworking work like this, it's more likely that I won't measure at all and I'll just cut a bunch of times. And so what I'm doing is I'm setting the, the bottom into where I need it to go and cutting it bigger than I need at first and then just feathering it down cut by cut, you know, a third of a saw blade length, sometimes even less than that until it, it just fits. And I have no idea what the final measurement is, it just, I know it fits. Um, you know, when you're using a pencil, the pencil has a width to it, uh, tape measures could be slightly off, um, you know, the lines on a ruler aren't perfectly small, so you could be off by just that much if you're relying on, on measurements. Here I'm relying on the piece and I'm just feathering it down smaller and smaller until it fits perfectly. And here you can see it's almost there and then I just barely anything and then I get it to fit perfectly tight. So you could, here I'm just marking out where I'm going to put the dowels. There's no good way to put glue into that joint because it's it's so tight. It holds itself in without anything, but it's the bottom of the box, so there's going to be weight on it. 
so I'm reinforcing it with dowels and the dowels are what's going to hold it in but because it's the bottom I'm using thicker dowels than I did on the sides I used 5 16 inch dowels on the side and here I'm using 3 8 inch dowels and here I am cutting the the top um, this I'm just cutting bigger than it needs to be I'm not worried about measuring you know it precisely I'm just making sure that whatever I cut there's a little bit of a lip left over and then just glue the top on uh, make sure there's a little bit of overhang on each side you don't have to worry about it being even or or it being straight as long as there's a little bit of overhang on all four sides you can just clamp it down or you could put some weights on it and then give that a good hour to dry or overnight if you can I'm not sure if I made it clear but you want to flush trim all the dials down also and then you just take a router and a flush cut bit and just trim up the top so that it's perfectly flush with the sides of the box Here I am just drilling holes in the top and reinforcing it with some more dowels. Now, as I said earlier, this is paint grade. I'm going to be painting over all of this. So I'm not really worried. I just kind of eyeball the placement of the dowels. But throughout the whole thing, you want to be, if you're not going to be painting it, you want to be spacing them out and measuring them so that they look good. Then you let that dry for a little while and then you trim those up flush. And then you sand everything up. Uh, this is your chance to flush up all of your dowels and to get rid of any glue squeeze out and get rid of any pencil marks. Uh, just make everything nice and smooth. A tip for a beginner sanders is you could just take your pencil and mark up the whole side and just sand away until all the pencil's gone. And for if you haven't developed a fill for sanding, that's a good way to know that you've sanded everything to you know, a good enough standard. But eventually you just can fill it with your hands. And then just figure out how big you want the top to be and just draw a line. Um, and then you can look at it to see if that's the size lid you want. You can make it bigger or smaller, you can cut it in half or just barely cut any off the top if you want. And then I go to the table saw and cut it. Now my blade is slightly too short to cut all the way through, like one layer of ply. That way the lid is still held firmly as I'm cutting it. And then I go back with a handsaw and cut it all the way off. And there's a nice, simple, sturdy plywood box. At this point, you could throw some hinges in there. You can paint this, you can veneer it, but it is a nice blank canvas from which to start building out a beautiful box. And that's what I'm going to do in an upcoming video. I have a client who wants a special box for a special occasion and I'm going to build them something that not only functions and will last a long time, but something beautiful that will make a great gift. So if you're interested in seeing what I end up doing with this box and you haven't already, uh, hit that subscribe button. If you like what I did or you find the information useful, if you'd give me a like, I'd appreciate it. And consider checking out some of my other videos. Other than that, uh, thank you very much for watching. Support your local craftsmen or get out in your workshop and make your own dust.